Today I'm sewing and sharing another great shorts pattern. These are the Peppermint Spring Shorts. It's another great free pattern that you can find on their website. I've left a link for you below so you can check out all the details, grab a copy, and sew them along with me. These shorts have an elastic waistband as well as an optional lacing so you can further customize that fit. When I sewed up these shorts, my intention was to create bottoms that I could mix and match with many other tops in my wardrobe. I also wanted to create a faux romper look by matching this top with the Sorbetto top by Seamwork. I've created a sew along for the Sorbetto top as well, so you can sew both pieces along with me if you want to create the same faux romper look. I hope you sew these shorts along with me, print out your pattern, cut out your fabric, and let's get started. Place your front piece and your pocket piece right sides together, matching them at the pocket slant and pinning in place. Sew this seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we're going to understitch this slanted seam. Open out your pocket so that it's laying flat, and so that pocket material is laying over this seam. And we're going to stitch the pocket to the seam allowance right along this seam line with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. On your pocket pattern piece, you have two notches indicating where to fold your pocket piece in half. Since we're doing a French seam for the bottom of the pocket, we're going to fold this pocket wrong sides together, folding the pockets along those notches, and pin in place along the bottom of your pocket. Sew the bottom of your pocket with a 1 8 inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn, turn the pocket inside out, poking out that corner, now that we've turned it around, pin your pocket once again along this bottom seam. And sew this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Turn your pocket to the inside of the pant along the pocket seam. Clip the pocket to the pant at the top and side seam. As you're pinning, make sure that the pocket is still aligned with the top notch. And then take it to your sewing machine and baste the pocket and the pant together along the top and side seam. Complete all of these steps for both pockets. Place your front piece right sides together with your back piece. Pin your side seams and inseams. Sew the side seam and inseam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and serge your seams to finish. And repeat these steps for your other front and back pieces. For both sets of front and back pieces, I've gone ahead and surged the entire crotch seam of both sets from the top of the front piece all the way down around the curve and all the way back up to the top of the back piece. Now that those edges are all finished, we're ready to attach these pieces together. With one of your front and back pieces turned right side out and your other set wrong side out, place the one that's right side out inside your other one so that they're facing right sides together and pin in place all along the crotch curve. And then sew this crotch curve with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn that seam, it's also recommended that you reinforce the seam, sewing once again about an eighth of an inch away from your original stitching line. Find the notches that indicate the front and the back of your pattern pieces, and you can stitch from notch to notch. Now we're going to prepare to sew the buttonholes into our waistband. On your waistband piece, you have a line indicating where to sew your buttonholes. The buttonhole stitching guide is right here near the fold line. Once you've transferred those buttonhole guides onto your fabric, it might be a good idea to apply interfacing to the wrong side of your fabric at those markings, just to make sure that the fabric is strong enough to support those buttonholes. Apply a few pieces of scrap interfacing and a couple of layers onto each buttonhole marking. And now I'm going to go to my machine and sew those buttonholes. Now that my buttonholes are sewn, I've gone ahead and opened them up. I've also gone ahead and surged the entire long edge opposite my buttonholes so that this edge is all finished and prepared to be the facing at a later step. Now take this waistband piece to your ironing board and fold it in half wrong sides together and give that a good press to create a memory crease. And once that's pressed, go ahead and open it back up and fold it in half the other way so that the short ends meet 
right sides together and pin this short edge. Sew the short edge with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Now we're going to attach this waistband to our pant piece. Place the waistband right sides together with the pant piece, matching up your raw edges. Pin in place all the way around, aligning your center front and center backs. Sew all the way around with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn all the way around, you can open out that waistband, fold the top half of the waistband to the inside along your memory crease. And when you do that, the surged edge of the inside of your waistband should just cover the stitches that we just sewed. Pin the waistband in place all the way around. And then working from the outside of the garment, Stitch in the ditch of the original seam line all the way around for a nice clean finish. Placing your needle inside and right along this seam where the pant and the waistband intersect. And before you close out that stitching, make sure you leave a gap of about two inches so that we can insert the elastic. To create a casing for the elastic, we're going to sew all around the waistband once more. This time you're going to sew 1 and 3 eighths of an inch below the top of the pant. Sew all the way around the waistband without leaving any gap in this stitching. I deducted 2 inches from my waist measurement and cut a strip of 1 inch wide elastic to that length. If you're unsure about how long you want your elastic to be, you could just cut a strip of elastic to your waist measurement and then do a fit test before we attach the elastic ends together. Make adjustments as necessary. I'm going to attach a safety pin to one end of the elastic. Insert the elastic through the opening that you left when you stitched in the ditch. Overlap the ends of the elastic by about half an inch and zigzag in place multiple times to secure. Pull the elastic to the inside of the pant. And to close the gap in your stitching, follow your original stitching line from where you stitched in the ditch earlier. Now you can take your drawstring and place it through one buttonhole all the way through the casing and out the other buttonhole. Place your front and back hemband pieces right sides together and clip the end matching your notches. And also pin or clip your slanted edges. Sew both ends with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and press your seams open. Do this for both sets of hembands. I've also gone ahead and surged all the way around the top edges of both hembands. Now place the hemband right sides together with the bottom of the shorts and pin in place all the way around matching your side seams. Now sew all the way around both of those leg holes with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you've sewn that seam, we're also going to understitch in the same way as we did for the pockets earlier. Open out that facing. You're going to stitch all the way around once again an eighth of an inch away from the original stitching line, sewing that facing to the seam allowance. And do this for the bottoms of both legs. Now fold this understitched hemband to the inside along that seam line and give that seam a really good press. And once that's pressed nice and crisp, take it to your sewing machine and edge stitch along the inner surged edge about an eighth of an inch away from that edge all the way around. Do that on both sides and you're all done with your shorts. Thank you for watching this sew along. Make sure you check out my other videos for more great sewing inspiration and I'll see you in the next video.